DNA tests, they are popular, aren't they? But how accurate are they? We send in the same DNA sample to several different companies to see if we get the same results. It's the first installment in our three-part investigation this week. And just to make things interesting, that DNA sample we sent off was mine. All right. This is... There's my Aunt Betty. That's Aunt Betty? My family keeps family photos. And this is her when she was oh. like four and family records. So Jess, this is you right here. Um, My father even knows the family lore. There's a lot of talk in the family about that we are descendants of Alexander Hamilton. So I submitted my DNA to not just one DNA testing company, but to three companies. My Heritage DNA, Ancestry.com, and 23andMe. We wanted to see if the companies would give me the same results. Okay. Let's see what they're doing. While I waited on the results, I spoke with Dr. Matt Gilk, a genetics professor at the University of North Florida, about how these tests work. So what they're doing is they're analyzing those million or so positions that differ in the human genome among different people, and essentially they can assign uh, uh, each position to a, a starting point or to an origin. A simple test. Gilk says all the companies use the same kind of science, and that science is better at determining which continents you're from. African, Australian, uh, Asian, European, uh, those kinds of differences are relatively easy to pick up. But when it comes down to pinpointing specific countries you're from, Germany versus Ireland or France or something like that, those details there's, are going to be more fuzzy. Overall, Gilg predicted I'd get similar results from all the companies. So you might see some, some differences in the details, but I think the main story is going to be the same among all of them. He even says one company may not be better than the other. If it was up to me, I'd probably do the cheapest one. After weeks of waiting, <laughs> the results started coming in. And there was a surprise. While the MyHeritage results showed I am 92.8% European, it also showed I am 7.2% African. Interesting. That's fascinating to me. And get this, the other test results were similar, but not the same. The 23andMe results show I am 99.6% European and only 0.4% African. Ancestry.com is similar, saying I'm about 98% European and less than 1% African. And then again, there's that MyHeritage result showing I have much more African in me, 92.8% European and 7.2% African. Really? About that? Yeah. I like that, actually. That's, that jazzes things up. <laughs> I thought that's, so too. That's great. And while I like the idea that I'm made up of a culture no one in my family knew about, I also know what it could mean. We have a history, uh, a, um, a very um, bad history of enslaving people here in the United States. Yeah. And so um, that may well be um, that that part of our uh, background came from that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I guess you can always hope that it was love that was involved, but you know, with slavery, it may well not have been. Gilg says one person can make a mark on your genetic story. It'll stick around, and 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 it's quite possible that uh, even you know a hundred generations after the fact, you could have a sign that that person was there. These DNA tests, even though slightly different, gave me insight to what I don't know and the stories I now want to uncover. Tonight, we show you how DNA tests are connecting long lost relatives. One local woman's cousin was a Playboy bunny. It's a story you gotta see and that's tonight at 11.